the beginning, there was darkness, and then bang, giving birth to an endless expanding existence of time, space, and matter. Every day, new discoveries are unlocking the mysterious, the mind-blowing, the deadly secrets of a place we call the universe. If you thought Saturn was the only ringed planet, think again. All four of the giant planets orbiting the sun have ring systems. Even Pluto might have rings. Flying a spacecraft through them would be deadly. These particles orbit Saturn at 15 times the speed of a rifle bullet. So to find them, ring hunters must push technology to the limit. It was a challenge. It's like taking a picture of a cat in a coal bin. From the outer reaches of the cosmos to a surprising ring system in our own backyard, this is the hunt for ringed planets. This is the sixth planet from the sun. Don't recognize it? That's because something's missing. Without its iconic rings, Saturn would be just another planet. They are the key to its beauty. The exhilaration of seeing Saturn's rings through the telescope can't be overstated. It is just such a marvelous sight. People have been in awe of Saturn's rings since Galileo first discovered them in the year 1610. Since then, astronomers have applied everything they know about the original ringed planet in their hunt for more. But when we gaze at Saturn's rings, what exactly are we looking at? The perfection viewed from Earth masks a scene of chaos. Things are bumping into each other and spattering off of, of one another, and, and so it's a very sort of chaotic, icy rubble field all moving together around Saturn. Over time, ring hunters found not just one ring, but a series of seven main bands around Saturn's equator. The first really detailed views of Saturn's rings came from the Voyager spacecraft around 1980. And those photographs were truly breathtaking. Each ring is made of trillions of particles, ranging in size from a grain of dust to something as big as a house. They were easy to see since they're the brightest rings in the solar system. They glisten because they are so tightly packed and because the chunks are highly reflective, being almost 100% ice. If you were positioned below Saturn's rings, but a few hundred yards away, you would see this vast expanse of boulders and, and ice balls, snowballs. And through some parts, you could see stars on the other side, but other parts would be so thick that they would be opaque. It would be a wonderful sight. Astronomers named the seven main rings simply by the letters of the alphabet, but in the order they were discovered. A, B, C, D, E, F, and the last, detected in 1980, G. All told, ring hunters had found a system that sprawled a whopping 180,000 miles in diameter. The rings from edge to edge are almost two-thirds or so as wide as the distance from the Earth to our own moon. So they're quite vast. Yet incredibly, the rings form a single plane that is wafer thin, averaging less than 30 feet. They're very flat. It's like a sheet of paper the size of Central Park. But these beautiful structures are also turbocharged hellions. Their icy particles scream around the planet at up to 53,000 miles per hour, like speeding cars on a never-ending cosmic racetrack. At these high velocities, the ring spells certain death for anything daring to venture too close. 
So these particles orbit Saturn at 15 times the speed of a rifle bullet. A chunk just two inches wide could blast a deadly hole in a spacecraft. The particles are like race cars at mind-bending speeds. Yet like these cars, each particle in the ring is moving at almost the same speed as the ones around it. But since their speeds and directions don't match exactly and are sometimes changed by forces around them, the icy chunks relentlessly bump and jostle, just like race cars in the heat of competition. Most bumps are low impact and don't have much effect. But at times, a crash can send a particle hurtling into space. What keeps these rocketing ice balls in a ring? The powerful force of Saturn's gravitational pull. If you suddenly took Saturn's gravity away, then the ring particles would go flying off in the directions that they were going at the moment that Saturn disappeared. Instead, the gravity of the planet and the velocity of the particles are in perfect balance, so that the particles are eternally falling or curving in towards the planet, but never getting any closer. But Saturn is not the only source of gravity. The particles in the rings have their own, and it is relentlessly trying to pull them into a cluster to form something larger, like a small moon. Every particle is attracted to every other particle, and the, and the more massive ones have a bigger pull, and the closer you are, the more the pull is. But the gravity of the particles works against the gravity of Saturn. It's an eternal war. There's this constant battle, if you like, between the, the force of gravity trying to pull things together, gravity of the ring particles, and Saturn's gravity trying to tear them apart. Saturn's gravity pulls particles away from each other because of a universal law about the speed of objects in orbit. The closer you are to Saturn, the more quickly you need to move to stay in orbit. If you're not moving really fast, you'll fall into the planet. Particles of Saturn's innermost ring tear around at more than 30,000 miles per hour faster than those in the outermost ring. Even if one icy chunk is just a foot closer than another, there will be a tiny difference in speed. That difference is enough to prevent the particles from staying together. Even over very small distances, the inside particles are moving faster than the outside particles, stretching them out along these ring arcs. So you'll never get the rings coalescing back into a solid body. This perpetual battle of particles grouping into small structures, being pulled away and regrouping, has maintained the rings for millions, possibly billions of years. They're sort of jostling each other and bumping into each other, feeling their own very, very weak gravity, continuously forming transient structures which come and go. The whole ring system is in a very nice balance. The balance of gravity holds the ring system in place, but it's the motion of spinning around the planet that creates their breathtaking form. We've come here to a pizzeria to show how the natural form for a very rapidly rotating object is a thin disk. So we're starting out with a piece of pizza dough that's not spinning and is pretty much a round lump. When the dough is thrown and is spun up, it naturally flattens out into quite a very thin disc-like shape. The centrifugal force from the spinning causes the dough to flatten out. For a similar reason, the rapid orbital motion of the particles in Saturn's rings, the spin, if you will, of Saturn's rings allows it to form into a very stable, very long-lived, extremely thin disc. But if the rings are so stable, why did they disappear two years after the first ring hunter, Galileo, discovered them? In 1610, he made his first observation of the rings, which, through his primitive telescope, appeared as circles on either side of the planet. 